Hey folks, Michael McGee here. If you watched to the end of the last corn picking video, you saw me make a promise. If you didn't, I guess the promise is still valid. I have a couple other fields of corn that don't have the same kind of corn at all. I think that they got knocked down really bad by coons. Deer probably coming in cleaning up what the coons left. I don't know, let's go see what we... Rusty's over there chasing a rabbit. Let's go see what we got left. Here's my rig I've got for disking it when I get done picking. We're gonna disk it and plant it back down with wheat and rye. Here's the rig I've got for picking it. And the most important part of that rig, as you see, is boys. I've got boys. So let's go over there and let's see what we've got left. We made it over here. This corn was given to me. It is yellow, open pollinated seed from Guatemala. Let me pull a piece off here and show you. I don't know how much of this we're gonna get, but my main objective for this field is to just provide enough seed for next year so that I can get a bigger field going. Look at this, this is beautiful corn and it's open pollinated. It's not trucker's favorite. Now trucker's favorite does have a yellow variety. This is not that. This is something else. And as far as I know, the guy don't even know the name of the actual corn, but it came from Guatemala. I'm excited about it. It's a real hard dent corn. And I can't wait to see what we can do with this corn. I'm not gonna be able to feed much of it this year because I need to save it for seed, but I'm gonna get it going and you're gonna see it in the future. Now we're gonna get to work and get this picked. Let's go, boys. I've never picked this, I've never raised this before, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick it, and then I'm gonna look at it to see what I think the good qualities versus the bad qualities in comparison with Trucker's Favorite. It's got a really tough shuck, don't it? Mm -hmm. Wow. What do you think about it, Joe? Looks good. Pretty nice, ain't it? Yeah. Boy, this stuff's tall. It's just like Trucker's favorite. It grows eight foot off the ground. Amazing stuff. This stuff is huge. Big around. I'm impressed with the size of it and I'm impressed with the disease resistance, it seems. Now, there hadn't been anything planted in this little field in years and years that could have something to do with that. <laughs> I'm telling you what, the coons have eat us up here. The raccoons tore down that entire row and a lot of the field pretty much gone. So needless to say, we need to do a little trapping here. high as I can reach, ten, or eight foot. I can't reach 10 foot. I bet you this stalk is 12 feet, but this is ear, beautiful ear, man. To be honest, this stuff is barely hard enough to pick, but if we don't get it now, we ain't gonna get none. I mean, these coons are ripping us a new one, buddy. I'm telling you what, they are absolutely eating it up. They're not just tearing it down for the fun of it. All right, we got the yellow corn picked. Let's go on down here. I've got some hickory cane corn to pick down there if there's any left. Now this, folks, is a mess. This whole field was really good in corn and I'm sorry the sun's coming the wrong way but I see one ear hanging here let's get it <laughs> is that a good ear it's little but it's good <laughs> uh, there's a couple more there here hickory cane I 
All right, Dave, show us what hickory cane corn looks like. It's a white corn. It's a huge kernel corn. It's not a small kernel corn. And I mean, the, the kernels are almost as wide as your finger. They're really big. And it's a great bread corn. And I guess it's a really good coon corn because they ate it all up. It is also a tall open pollinated corn that grows on a tall stalk. Seems like all the old fashioned varieties did that. There's a nice size deer right here. Hard to get the right light in this sun, but you can see it's a monster kernel. This is all the coon left me on this ear. Very sweet of them to leave me a little. All right, this field was supposed to take like an hour to pick. We got it in five minutes. We just didn't get anything. So all we can do now is disc this field up and sow it in wheat and rye and clover. Let's do it. clover, wheat, and rye. I'm gonna plant it down in these fields and we'll have some more nitrogen in the ground come next year. Okay. Keep going. May as well use it all. Let me tell you a little story. I hate to tell you this because it's going to kind of reveal my age, but you already know I'm old, so who cares? This field, 1996, there was a sweet corn patch out here. The sweet corn was getting eat up just about like what you see this, but not quite as bad. We found a den in the middle of the sweet corn patch. So me and my buddy Wade, Wade, I know you're probably watching this video. You'll remember this. We set a trap in the mouth of that little den. The next morning we had us a raccoon. That coon we took right here into this very house and we fried it up. Actually, no, it was 
one house down the road. He stayed one house down the road, I stayed here. And we fried it up with, fr with some taters. The very next day, we reset the trap. The very next day, we caught the biggest groundhog I believe I've ever seen. In the same den was a groundhog and a coon living in the same den? I don't think so. That was in the 90s. They might do that in 2020, not in 1996. plant clover you can expect good nitrogen now the wheat and the rye maybe not as much but you got a lot of root mass and that root mass adds to the humus in the soil it's great so if you can at all plant a cover crop it's good for the soil it's good for the rabbits in your area the deer ah, I wish we could get rid of a few coons but other than that we're doing pretty good around here so we're gonna get on out of here we appreciate you we hope you have a great day and we'll see you on the next video.